Congressman Mondaire Jones here endorsing my friend and Westchester County Executive George Latimer, who is a tremendous public servant with a track record of delivering real results for this community here in Westchester County. Uh, things like protecting reproductive freedom, getting weapons of war off our streets, making sure that we are making adequate investments in infrastructure, and bringing a level-headedness and a seriousness and a unifying voice to policy discussions here. You just watched former progressive turn sellout Mondaire Jones endorse Jamal Bowman's APAC funded genocide supporting opponent because uh, something something reproductive rights or whatever. As if Jamal Bowman isn't a strong advocate for reproductive rights. Now, he gave other reasons to be fair for this endorsement, one of them being climate change, another being Israel. But listen, this is not about Jamal Bowman's policies, nor is it about Jamal Bowman. This endorsement is about Mondaire Jones. And I say this because it's one of the most transparently opportunistic things a politician has ever done, in my opinion. But thankfully, Mondaire Jones is already getting his comeuppance for betraying his friend and the entire progressive movement. So there's a lot that has happened since he made that controversial endorsement. And I'm going to talk about all of it, as well as his response to the repercussions that he's now facing. But first, I do want to talk about that endorsement itself, because he's throwing Jamal Bowman, who he considered a friend, under the bus purely for self-serving reasons. Now, listen, it's okay to disagree with friends on policy, and it's fine to even call them out for said policy disagreements, but that's not what's happening here. This is not about a genuine policy disagreement. What Mondaire Jones is doing here is trying to help himself. Now, when he spoke at the press event about his endorsement for Latimer, well, he claimed that this was about Israel and said why. However, the report that you're going to watch is going to give you some additional insight into his actual motivations. Jewish residents in my district who feel anxiety, fear, and anger due to Representative Bowman's words and actions in particular and an overall climate in this country. My position on Israel, I think, is not only similar to Mondaire's, but I think it's the mainstream of the Democratic conference. Remember, Jones is running in New York 17, which spills into Rockland County. Breaking with Bowman could help him with Jewish voters there, as Jones tries to unseat Republican incumbent Mike Lawler. There it is. He's making a political calculation. He thinks that if he supports genocide and endorses a candidate recruited by APAC who also supports genocide, then he'll be able to accomplish a couple of things. First, he thinks he'll be able to ingratiate himself with Jewish voters in the district that he's trying to win. And also, he is signaling to the Israel lobby that he'd be another strong supporter of genocide in Congress. But there's a problem with the strategy. APAC has already endorsed Mondaire Jones' Republican opponent, Mike Lawler, who has literally introduced and passed anti-free speech legislation at the behest of Israel. Now, Mondaire Jones himself has received hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Israel lobby just in case Lawler loses. But in a competition between him and Mike Lawler, he's not going to convince the Israel lobby that he'd be better on this issue given his history as a squad adjacent member of Congress. But it's a purple district. And it does have a sizable Jewish population. And since Jewish voters tend to lean Democrat, he's thinking that he can win them over by supporting Israel's genocide and by calling critics of Israel like Jamal Bowman anti-Semitic. But ironically, what Mondaire Jones is doing here is engaging in anti-Semitism himself because Jewish people are not a monolith. In fact, a poll conducted by a right-wing Israeli think tank found that a majority of American Jewish people support withholding arms to Israel and a third of them believe that Israel is committing a genocide. Furthermore, equating Zionism with Judaism is itself anti-Semitic because you're essentially blaming Jewish people for the acts of the Israeli government. And and that's wrong because people are people and governments are governments. You have to make that distinction. And that generalization right there is downright defamatory. But don't take it from me. Take it from an Orthodox Jewish man who explained this to Walter Masterson. The movement of Zionism since day one is misusing religion to justify all crimes it is committing. While the movement of Zionism is officially secular. They don't even claim to be religion, religious. Yeah. And why do they misuse the religion? Just in order to miss, uh, uh, to confuse the masses, to have the world think and believe as if all Jews support this movement and as if 
the Jewish religion, the Holy Torah condones the existence of the state of Israel, the occupation of Palestine, or all criminal actions it commits. All of this is unacceptable. All of this is embarrassing for Jewish people. And as I said, dangerous to Jewish people as well. Now, yes, that's just one person. But the point is that you shouldn't generalize Jewish people because Zionism and Judaism are two very different things. But Mondair Jones is accusing Jamal Bowman of causing pain and anxiety among his own constituents because he had the audacity to condemn Israel's genocide in Gaza, which implies that not supporting genocide is somehow offensive to Jewish people, all Jewish people. That is slanderous. And also, in doing this, Mondaire Jones is erasing the support Jamal Bowman already has from Jewish people and Jewish groups, which he talked about in an interview on Democracy Now! Just like the African-American community, the Jewish community is not a monolith. So we have tremendous support from organizations like Jewish Voices for Peace, Bend the Ark, Americans for Peace Now!, if not now, the Jewish vote, uh, the C4 arm of JFREG, uh, and many others. And so, yes, there are uh, Jewish constituents who want me to have a different approach to uh, Israel in general, and specifically a different approach to what's happening in Gaza. But there are many Jewish organizations and many Jewish constituents who support the work I'm doing and understand very clearly, clearly that a pathway to peace forward has to include a free Palestine. We can fight anti-Semitism and have a free Palestine at the same time. You can criticize Israel, you can criticize Zionism and not be anti-Semitic. And it's been very challenging having these conversations because APAC and others with their propaganda machine has been in place for many years uh, do not engage in these conversations. And the only way to create a better world and a better democracy and a better and a better Israel and a free Palestine is through honest, open conversations that move up forward. But I guess those Jewish voices don't matter to Mondaire Jones because there's an election to be won. So he'll say what he thinks he needs to and go wherever way the wind is blowing to get elected. But one of the other reasons Mondaire Jones gave for endorsing Latimer over Bowman was climate change, comically enough, which is so absurd. But I think that Climate Defiance, a group that endorsed Bowman, put it best in a thread on Twitter. They write, we name names at Climate Defiance. This is Mondaire Jones using climate in his justification. He just endorsed centrist George Latimer in his bid to unseat progressive Jamal Bowman. Latimer pledged there is not going to be a George Latimer climate change bill. Some background. Jones entered Congress in 2020 as a squad adjacent Green New Deal loving AOC endorsed progressive, but he flipped. Now he is endorsing the opponent of Jamal Bowman who has been one of the most consistent outspoken voices for climate and justice. Jamal Bowman has shown up for climate defiance time and time again. He has stood with us in NYC. He has stood with us in D.C. He actually believes in this work. Jones also used Gaza to justify trying to unseat Bowman. He said there is nothing progressive about rushing to call for a ceasefire in the days following October 7th, LOL. It's crazy that he says this because Jamal Bowman was proven right to call for a ceasefire. Anyways, they continue. Lots of politicians are self-serving, but this quote takes the cake. Jones began his endorsement by anointing himself one of the most popular Democrats in the Hudson Valley. In the last election cycle, he carpet back to the West Village in an attempt to find more votes embarrassing. But as you can see now, it's pretty clear why Mondaire Jones did what he did. You don't humiliate yourself by going full Fetterman unless you think there's going to be some sort of a political payoff. And he honestly believes that doing this is going to help him defeat APAC darling Mike Lawler by trying to be more enthusiastic about his support for genocide or something. I just feel like this strategy is very dim-witted because the people who are bankrolling candidates who support genocide, APAC, the Israel lobby, Republican donors, they're already rolling with Lawler. So you're not going to get their support no matter how enthusiastic you are. But what you are doing is alienating progressives. You've just pissed off every single progressive in that district by betraying them and Jamal Bowman. So this doesn't seem like a good strategy. Now, Jones tried to cover his bases and also justify this endorsement by touting Latimer as a proponent for reproductive rights and a supporter of LGBTQ plus rights, which is kind of a low bar for a Democrat. In fact, it should be just automatically assumed that every single Democrat running for office supports reproductive rights and LGBTQ plus rights. Otherwise, they shouldn't even be considered. But ironically, Jones, as a gay man, made a miscalculation here as well because George Latimer actually chose to show his disgusting face at Pride, and he was confronted by a queer woman, 
about its donation, specifically from queerphobic Republican donors that also fund APAC. And the way that he responded was so hilarious to me because he basically just melted down like a snowflake and treated this potential constituent like they were a threat to him when clearly they're just asking a question of somebody who wants to be their representative. But watch how he reacted. It's so humiliating. Excuse me? Let's go. Andrew? I was wondering, will you return donations from Donald Trump donors? Excuse me. Do you think it's okay for Republican money to be interfering with Democratic primaries? Excuse me. Excuse me. Is he running for Congress? No, you're not answering. It's a pretty simple question. Will you return donations to Donald Trump? Thank you for your education. Have a good day. Will you? It's a very simple question. So you're running for Congress and you can't answer a simple question? Ma'am. Will you return donations to Donald Trump? Do you think it's okay for Republican money to be interfering with? Thank Democrat, you very much for your time and effort. Okay, no, I understand. We'll make sure that everybody knows who's agitating me from the public. Will you return money? Look, I'm a queer youth. You're at a private event, and I'm worried about MAGA money right? being in Democratic primaries. Don't worry about it with me. I know you're a progressive. You say you are, but you're also taking money from people who donate to Donald Trump. Donald Trump supporters support anti-trans and queer legislation across the country. No, no, no. I want him to stay with us. Stay with us. Yeah. We don't know what people want. If you're accepting money from people, you're accepting money from people who support anti-parent trans legislation across the country. That was pathetic. He's got an entire posse around him and the protection of a cop, and he's treating one queer person as if they're some sort of a security threat. Now, he's lucky that there was only one person who confronted him because genocide supporters should never be welcomed at any pride event anywhere, and neither should cops, by the way. But he couldn't even answer a simple fucking question from a potential constituent. But of course, that's not all he won't answer for, because as APAC Tracker points out, he still has not filed the financial disclosures that he's legally obligated to disclose since he qualified as a candidate. Probably because he doesn't want voters to see how bought and paid for he is by a foreign government. But yet, Mondaire Jones was like, no, this is all fine. That's my guy. He's the true progressive, not Jamal Bowman. It's just embarrassing. Now, as soon as Mondaire Jones flipped, progressives were quick to call him out on his bullshit. Semaphore reports, quote, I am appalled, Representative Barbara Lee said. It's disgusting, said Representative Cory Bush, who also faces a well-funded primary challenge this cycle. Is that who he wants to be? Someone that the members can't even trust? Someone that the members know will be your friend one day, and then as soon as it's beneficial to him, will completely not only turn on you, but will go and support the person that is challenging you? Representative Summer Lee called the endorsement incredibly disappointing. Here we have a former Congressional Progressive Caucus and Congressional Black Caucus member who's endorsing against both a progressive and black man who was the first black man in his seat, she said. So it couldn't be me, but I think and hope that people will look at that for what that is. Yeah, and it seems like people are looking at it for what it is because the backlash has already been immense. And if you go to Mondaire Jones's Twitter page and just look at the replies to any one of his tweets, it's just a bunch of people shitting on him because he just did the most scumbag thing you can possibly do. So I'm really happy to see that. And I'm also happy to see progressives in Congress stand in solidarity with Jamal Bowman here because this is about more than this one race. Like this race is very important, don't get me wrong, but this is bigger than that. This is about democracy because a lobbying firm of a foreign government shouldn't be able to buy representation in our government. This is America, not Israel. And I think that letting foreign governments buy representation, that's dangerous. But it's not like it hasn't already happened because APAC has already defeated members of Congress as well as congressional candidates for just expressing the most mild criticism of Israel. Nina Turner, there was the police officer on January 6th that was a supporter of Israel but not supportive enough and they defeated him as well. So I think that now is the time that we collectively draw a line as progressives and say enough is enough. That is really important. And anyone who is complicit with this undemocratic rigging of American elections by a foreign government, they're just as bad as the people doing the lobbying. But thankfully, Mondaire Jones is being punished by progressives and being shitted on by progressives for doing what he did. And that includes institutions in the progressive movement. For example, the Working Families Party has responded by pulling financial and ground support from Jones's campaign, saying that Jones has strayed from the principles that he espoused in 2020. And they add, quote, his decision to back George Latimer, who uses racist dog whistles, rejects core parts of President Biden's economic agenda and shares donors with Mondaire's 
own MAGA extremist opponent runs counter to our values as a party. So, yeah, you love to see it, but there's more because the Congressional Progressive Caucus has officially rescinded their endorsement of Jones following his endorsement of Latimer. And Jones released a statement in response to that news saying, quote, I have no regrets about standing up for what I firmly believe in. I have known and worked with George Latimer for years. Representative Bowman and I have very different views on Israel. Save it already. We already know that you're not standing up for what you firmly believe in. You're just a careerist saying what you think you need to say to get elected. You're just another Tulsi Gabbard or John Fetterman. So spare us the bullshit. Don't piss on our legs and tell us it's raining. We know what the fuck you're doing. You don't believe anything. You're an empty suit and lobbyists and special interests, they're the ones dictating your positions, not principles. But keep coping because, you know, you fucked around and uh, now you're finding out. And if this move ends up costing you the election, well, maybe, you know, you can pretend to be a progressive and run again in a different district and maybe just try out a bunch of character archetypes until you finally find one that gets you elected again. But to be clear, this isn't just about opportunism here. It's also about cowardice. Mondaire Jones knows that if he's ever elected to Congress again, he needs to enthusiastically support genocide in order to insulate himself from a challenge from the Israel lobby. Jamal Bowman, on the other hand, is someone who actually chose to remain principled despite knowing the consequences of being principled and being true to what you believe in. And now APAC is trying to destroy him for it. And in an interview with Democracy Now!, he detailed how far APAC is willing to go to defeat him. And spoiler alert, it's very, very far. It's unprecedented. I believe uh, APAC is spending more money in this race than they have ever spent before. You know, they are bombarding uh, my constituents with ads, ironically, that have nothing to do with Israel, even though they are a lobby group for Israel. And so it's been overwhelming for the district. The district is actually pretty tired of it. And it is mainly because I called for a permanent ceasefire back in October, and we have been consistent in calling what's happening in Gaza right now an ongoing genocide. And just to put it in perspective, APAC has pledged to spend $100 million this election cycle alone defeating anti-genocide candidates, and about $25 million of that is going to be spent on Jamal Bowman. So the choice couldn't be more clear. You can have a progressive member of Congress who's actually principled and against genocide, or you can support a conservative Democrat recruited to run by the lobbying group of a foreign government that's doing a genocide. To me, I feel like this is the easiest choice ever, and if Jamal Bowman ends up losing this primary, I hope that he immediately pivots to a write-in campaign because there's no sore loser laws in New York. So regardless of what happens, he should see this race through to the end and keep campaigning until November. But I don't want it to get to that. I want him to win this primary so he doesn't have to worry about a write-in campaign. So we need to do what we can to help him get elected, share the word, donate to him, phone bank. And if you live in that district, consider knocking on some doors for him because even though money is oftentimes the tipping point in these races, I do still believe that raw grassroots power can defeat big money. It's already happened before with Cory Bush and Summer Lee, and I think it can happen again. So we've got to do what we can to protect Jamal Bowman. Otherwise, we're going to be trading one of the best members of Congress for one of the worst.